now with a preview are two commission members, two key members, Senator Kent Conrad, who is the chairman of the Budget Committee, also Senator Judd Gregg, who's the ranking member of the Budget Committee. And gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. It's good to see you both. Thank you, Becky. Good to be with you. you to have us on. Well, we have a lot to talk about this morning, but uh, I, I don't know if you heard earlier, we had a couple of uh, political journalists who were pointing out that they think in some ways this commission has been set up for a little bit of form of cover as a way that the administration can later raise taxes. Uh, Senator Conrad, why don't you weigh in on what the journalists are already speculating about? Well, I don't agree with that at all. Look, Senator Gregg and I proposed this three years ago, recognizing that we were on an unsustainable course as a country, that we're headed for a debt that will be 400 percent of the size of our economy. That's what the Congressional Budget Office has told us. That's what the General Accounting Office has told us. That is what the head of the Office of Management and Budget have told us. So look, uh, we know that the current course we're on cannot be sustained, that we must change that we must reduce spending from what is projected, that we must find a way to increase revenue from what is projected if we're to close this gap and strengthen the economic future of the country. If we don't, the best experts in the country have told us we will jeopardize future economic growth and economic strength of this country. So a lot is at stake here. This isn't uh, an agenda of doing anything other than getting America back on a stronger on a stronger course. Senator Gregg, I know both you and Senator Conrad have been preaching this message for some time. Do you think it's yeah. picking up steam? Do you think it's something that's resonating with American voters at this point? Well, first, as to your first point, which is there a revenue issue here? No, primarily this is a spending issue. I, the simple fact is the spending has gone up dramatically in this country. We're, we historically spend about 19.8% of GDP in the federal government. We're up to 24% this year. We're headed towards 27%. We can't afford those levels of spending. So this is a spending issue. We still have very robust revenues headed our way, uh, but we've got to control spending. On the issue of whether or not uh, there's an atmosphere out there to get something substantive done and make some very difficult decisions, because they will be difficult, yes, I think there is. I think that's what all, all, all this is about. All this discussion that you're hearing in the marketplace today of ideas is about the deficit and the debt and spending. People are really concerned because they get it. Common sense tells the average American that you can't run up these massive deficits and, and just continue to spend in this way and not pass on to your kids a country which is less strong, less solvent, and where there's a lower standard of living than what we have today. And, and people get it. Congress needs to get it. And that's the purpose of this commission, hopefully, to produce some ideas that Congress can react to and actually do something constructive. Senator Conrad, you. Uh I remember during health care, you cut to the chase immediately and said no public option. I mean, you, you, you sometimes will break with uh, the mainstream and, and, and say what you mean. You did the other day with the tax cuts, uh, the Bush tax cuts, even for wealthy individuals. Um, can you clarify what's more important to you, the, the revenue that you would generate by letting them uh, expire on the wealthy or the damage that it would do to a nascent economic recovery if you raise taxes? What should we do? What are you going to push for? First of all, let me say that uh, our deficit situation is a combination of our spending and our revenue. Uh, the hard reality is we are at the highest level of spending as a share of our gross domestic product in 50 years. Our revenue is the lowest it has been as a share of gross domestic product in 50 years. So look, we've got a revenue problem and a spending problem. I would agree with Senator Gregg that the solution lies mostly on the spending side, because if you look at the long-term circumstance we confront, uh, you're going to have to do more of the fix on the spending side. Look, with respect to uh, the question of the expiring tax cuts, the first priority is to extend them on the middle class. We should not have any tax increase on the middle class. They are already overly burdened with the economic downturn. Number two, the general rule of thumb is you don't cut spending or raise taxes in the midst of a downturn. This downturn is still continuing. One in every six Americans is either underemployed or unemployed. So we got to be very careful with the timing of what we do. There's no question in my mind that taxes have to go up on the wealthiest among us. The question is when I don't think this is the moment. Well, the big ideological divide in the country, Senator, is whether you end up with more revenue by 
uh, you know, by letting capital not be overtaxed. If companies do better and individuals do better, then that then the, the, the government collects more in taxes. If if you kill economic activity, or, or for just for argument's sake, by raising taxes on capital in a, in a recession, then you end up with less. So it's it's almost counterintuitive, and that's where the big argument comes in. Well, in a way, you're making my point, but look. The How's congressional that? budget congressional budget office has told us very clearly deficit finance tax reductions actually hurt long-term economic growth. Let let me repeat that. The congressional budget office has demonstrated deficit financed tax cuts actually hurt long-term growth because the drag of additional debt now that we're at the debt levels what we are that that drag of additional debt hurts you more than the tax reductions help you. So look, uh, what we do on the revenue side has to be carefully done. The emphasis needs to be on the spending side of the equation. But anybody that thinks we're going to get through this without raising revenue is not dealing with reality, I believe. Senator Gregg, uh, in order to deal with the spending issue, uh, as you know better than most, you've got to deal with Medicare, you've got to deal with Social Security, you've got to deal with defense. All three of these have been uh, areas where politicians have carefully avoided. Uh, how do you think you're going to approach it this time around? Well, there's no question you've got to make very aggressive decisions in all three of those areas. Uh, unfortunately, the, the health care bill aggravated the Medicare issue because it took reductions in Medicare, which we might have used to make Medicare more solvent and use them to create new entitlements, which was counterproductive in my opinion. Uh, Social Security has about four or five moving parts. We all know what they are. It just takes the polit political courage to step up and do it. And I think we should do it. And I think we can do it. And that's what this commission hopefully will do. On the defense side, we're fighting wars right now. And so it's very difficult to address the defense equation when you're in the middle of a war climate. You want to make sure that uh, your troops on the ground get everything they need. But there's no question there are weapon systems and overhead in the Defense Department that can be addressed. And I, I think there's a process for doing that which might we might revisit, which is called BRAC, uh, but do it relative to weapon systems and overhead independent of base closures. Uh, so we've already gone through the base closure exercise. So I think all of these issues have to be addressed, and they have to be addressed, uh, in my opinion, very aggressively. And, and I'm willing to go back and take another look at health care, especially in the Medicare accounts, to see where we can get some more savings uh, in a way that's responsible. But we've got to get more savings. Senator Conrad, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just want to make sure I understand what you were talking about earlier with these uh, tax increases. You say now is not the time because we're still in a downturn. Does that mean a year from now, two years from now, you would think that would be the time to raise taxes and, and, and bring in more revenue? Yeah, I think what we need to do now is we need to agree on the plan to deal with spending reductions and additional revenue, uh, but not implement those plans at the moment when the economy remains weak. So, so if... A lot of people see something getting set up uh, it, b before the election, Senator, about, you know, the battle is going to be that, that your side, the Democrats, want to just do it for 250 or less. And the Republicans may say, we won't let you do that unless you uh, let all of them uh, be extended. Which side would you come down on? Uh, I would come down on the side of, just as I've described, my own view is we should agree on a plan now but the implementation of that plan should not take place until we see better economic recovery. Yeah. Then that sounds like you're saying extend them for everyone, uh, at least for the next year or so. Yeah, I think you know, that's what I've said uh, repeatedly over the last several weeks. Well, you but, but that does not mean that we don't ever do it. Right. I mean, some, some don't ever want to do it. I don't think they're being responsible. This is a circumstance in which the long-term economic strength of the country is at stake if we fail to reduce spending from what is projected and if we fail to reform the revenue system, which is unfair, inefficient, and hurting the competitive position of the country. Listen, Joe, the issue here, and I, and I agree basically with, the, with some of the outline of what Kent's saying, but the issue here is spending. 
I mean, you can't take spending from 20% of GDP to 27% of GDP and have a solvent government. It's that simple. So we have to do something about spending. On the tax side, sure, we should reform it. Senator Wyden and I have a proposal to do that. Take, take, the, take the top corporate rates from 25, 35% down to 24%. Give people an incentive to go out and create jobs and create capital and, and use capital to create jobs. That's what, that's what our tax law should do, and we should have that type of reform. But the first focus has to be on the spending side of the ledger. That's where the energy has to be put in, because that's where, you know, as Willie Sutton said, he used to rob banks because that's where the money was. That's where the money is, that's where the problem is, and that's where this government's got to step up and take some tough decisions. All right, Senators Greg, Senator Conrad, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate all the work that you're putting in on this effort. Thank, thank you. you. All right, coming up. Uh